Suspect caught, uh, sought, I should say, in the killing of a Trump supporter was killed late Thursday night himself as he was being arrested by law enforcement. Michael Reinel claimed that he was a member of Antifa and joining us now for more on the loosening of Antifa, uh, Antifa's stronghold on Portland uh, is former military intel officer Steve Rogers. Steve, good to see you. We appreciate My you coming on. Be here. Uh, you know, I think a lot of people were wondering, when is this going to end? We're watching this for three months. It seems like they're, they're starting to lay down the hammer. Well, they certainly are, and the hammer is being laid down because of the quick action of President uh, Trump. Uh, look, he has deputized state troopers in Oregon to protect the federal buildings. So when they start making arrests, you could be sure that these individuals are going to be going off to jail. One of the problems that uh, we're facing in Oregon and other cities is that you got the DA's, district attorneys, right. uh, telling the police, you know, not to arrest these people, to, to look at their needs first. Well, mm -hmm. President Trump is not going to tolerate that. Uh, they're going to be arrested and they're going to be carted off to jail. But I, I, I was under the impression that the feds could only do so much, that they can only charge for things that are federal crimes. And a lot of the vandalism, the things that we've seen, the burning of things, uh, it doesn't go under a federal crime. And so that's left to the local DAs who, like you said, a lot of times are very liberal. Well, you're absolutely right. Uh, and as a result of the uh, state troopers being deputized, they'll be able now to protect those federal buildings. But what I see, this is mm -hmm. the beginning of starting to integrate everyone together. Because, look, Portland is completely uh, a disaster right now. And you're going to see the authority be somewhat expanded because they are state troopers. They are deputized. And uh, I just believe that the president's uh, going down the right path to bring law and order back to that city. Yeah. Let's talk about Michael Rhino here for a second, the, the man that was killed uh, as he was being arrested. Um, this all happened yesterday. You know, this guy had killed a Trump supporter in the middle of a, a protest, you know, two sides against each other. He said he was defending himself. But the really interesting thing was to see him pop up in the media and to see Vice News do an interview with this man uh, before while he was still being sought by police. What'd you make of that? Well, you know, this is the boldness of uh, Antifa, the boldness of the socialist, uh, communist funded groups. Uh, and uh, it's just remarkable that he would actually go on social media. And I believe he said they're hunting me. I think he used the word hunting, that right. he's being hunted down. Uh, but keep in mind also what is really surprising and, well, maybe not surprising, but rather shocking, not even the DNC, the Democrats, the socialists, no one really came out and condemned this guy for what he did. So maybe he was, again, emboldened by the tacit, if anything, uh, uh, approval of some of the people who he believes he was representing and supporting. But uh, look, at, we don't want to see anybody die, but I'm glad he's off the streets. Absolutely. What do, what do you think is feeding all of this? I mean, a lot of people say they've never seen a situation like this in this country, you know, where people, I guess, seem so comfortable to run around and just wreak havoc in our cities, to destroy, to loot. I mean, some of the images that we've seen over the last few months really disturbing people. What do you, what do, you do now, and where did this come from? Two things are seeding this. One, the lack of response in the beginning from yeah. the Democrat socialist uh, lawmakers. Look, there was no response in Minneapolis, no response in Portland, no response in Seattle. Everything was going to be fine. This is what they said, and they'd go away. Well, when you do that, when you don't respond immediately like Rudy Giuliani did in New York, uh, you're going to see this uh, lack of response embolden people to do these things. And secondly, very, very important. Ronald Reagan warned about this in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. He said, you know, we were at war with the Soviet communists, uh, but the American people didn't understand it was indeed a war to take this country down. Here we are in the 21st century, now at war with socialists and perhaps being fueled by the Chinese Communist Party uh, and other uh, entities uh, trying to bring this country down. So this mm. is what it's all about. Do you, do you feel the tide is turning? Do you feel like this is going to get uh, more under control in the fall? No question about it. As yeah. long as the president of the United States is given the ability by these governors and mayors, which seems to be turning because now they're being running out of being run out of their homes like that mayor in uh, Portland. <laughs> right. uh, as, uh, you know, the, the very him, yeah. people that emboldened them is turning on them. But the president's been consistent and I see the tide turning. And I, I really see a great victory for the president because even Democrat conservatives are just said enough is enough. Yeah, well, I, I think you're right. I think a lot of the people that tried to pander to this mob initially learned that there, there's no satisfying them unless you give them exactly what they want. You can't meet them halfway. Uh, guys like Ted Wheeler in Portland, like you said. Steve Rogers, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Good to see you. Always a pleasure. Thank you. All right. We're going to turn now to the stimulus.